Mark, welcome. Thank you, Donald. A novelist will often speak about the hardest sentence in the book being the very first sentence. That is, they spend a lot of time inventing a sentence, going back to it, rewriting it. How is it when you, as a composer, begin a piece? Is bar one indeed the first bar that you write? Actually, in fact, I don't believe I've ever in any piece written bar one first. For me, the impetus of a piece is something more powerful, more developed. And so if I have an idea, it's more expressive and more later on in the piece. And I'm so accustomed to that that I'll usually start with something and then think, well, that, that can't really be the beginning. There has to be something before that. So what you hear first in this piece has come from much later. In a way, uh, that might be cheating in the sense that you're supposed to have an idea and then develop it as the piece. And I find that most often I will go the other way around. I will deconstruct to get back to what could have been the genesis. Mm -hmm. I think you're in the best company. When I think of composers like Richard Wagner, who, so to speak, wrote the ring backwards, you know, and always yeah. needed yeah. A, a further exposition, a further exposition. You make that sound a little abstract, as if an idea just comes to you. There are many people who will be wondering what exactly the unicorn of Atlas Peak indeed is, and the extent to which that then provides you with an idea. Would you speak briefly to the, this Absolutely. title? Absolutely. The title came from the genesis of the piece, which is you and I meeting in Berlin uh, and our mutual dear friend, John Kongsgaard from Napa. And he lives on top of a beautiful mountain called Atlas Peak. And he's either a guru or perhaps a unicorn. Uh, the wines that he creates come from a very deep and, and powerful connection to the grapes, to the, to the earth and to growth. And hence the title. In that sense, I had a feeling about the end of the piece. It's a very strange and mythical sense to the end of it, uh, a place where a unicorn might live. Can you give us a little, besides what gave you the inspiration, what should, what should they be listening out for? Well, I feel that the journeys that one takes in a piece are very individual. I always feel that I try and manipulate in the best sense, not in an evil way, but in a very good way, manipulate a person's emotional sense of where you are. And in this piece, to put you in a place where you don't know what the end is, where something needs to be resolved, you feel a resolution is necessary, but you don't know what it is. And then to make the resolution be something which, in essence, floats away into the atmosphere. Thank you for being here and thank you for writing such an extraordinary work. I'm so grateful for the seriousness and the dedication of both the orchestra and obviously you. And uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. Well, it's the least we can do both for you and our mutual incredible friend, yes. John Cheers, Cigard. John. Cheers, John. Thank you. Welcome.